So my ammeter is now connected to my board. If I now reset my board using the black button on the front of the evaluation board, my current consumption on my meter is about 14.7 milliamps uh, while it's running the core mark. And then once it's completed the core mark, it drops down to about 13.8 milliamps. So hopefully you should be seeing a uh, similar response. So if we compare that to our presentation slide that we had. So, so there we go. 14.3 milliamps with the device running at 80 megahertz. So we're getting the correct current consumption, which works out to be about 178 microamps per megahertz. We're consuming in full run mode. So if we now launch our terminal program, um, we will be able to see the results that we get uh, from the terminal program. So I will go and launch Termite. So here is our Termite program. And our configuration for Termite needs to be 115200 bits per second, 8, N and 1. So I will change my settings to 115500, 8, No and 1. And OK that. And now when I reset my board, we now get the results coming from the virtual COM port and I am getting 263 iterations per second there from my termite program which is what I am expecting to see so 263 796392 so, so I go and look at my termite yeah so not quite exactly 26305 so again slightly different you will get some tiny differences um, between the exact iterations per second but you can see there that we're running from main flash so 800,000 is the flash our data is stored in the SRAM so that's 2 million hex as a start address so our Art accelerator is on and we're running at 80 uh, megahertz for this particular cycle. So this is giving you the feedback over the virtual COM port uh, back to your PC from the STM32L4 using the printf statements that we have inside the application. So if I now go and change my clock source down to the 24 megahertz so I'll go back into my code again so I should now end up seeing about 4.5 milliamps on my uh, ammeter when I run this second exercise so I will go and uncomment out that line F7 again to rebuild the application so that's built and if I now go to project Download, download active application. So that's now put my application back into my board. If I now press my reset button on my device, I am pulling about 4.8 milliamps on my meter while I'm processing the core mark score. And then that now drops down to about 4.5 when it's finished the results. So if we compare that to what we have on the PowerPoint, so 4.5, so 4.8, 4.5, it's pretty uh, close there to the numbers. And we should see a core mark score on our termite uh, output of about 80.5. Let's go and have a look at our termite example. 
and this one I'm getting slightly less on my board I'm getting about 78 so so you can see now that still running out of main flash still in the RAM but my clock speed is now at 24 megahertz so and because of that I will get a lower core max score so 78.79 is the core max score for that one So the next mode we have is low power run mode. So this is where the main regulator is now switched off, uh, which means we are now limiting our maximum speed to two megahertz, uh, which is all we can get out of the low power regulator. Again, on the left hand side, USB is the only peripheral that's not clocked. We haven't got 48 megahertz but all the other peripherals are available in low power run mode. So we have the ability to run any other peripheral, uh, even though we're limiting the core speed to two megahertz in this device. So here's an overview of the power consumption versus the frequency. So it's been split into the different run ranges. So, so we've got run range, number one um, over the on the right hand side so you can see that running from flash or SRAM one and two are all pretty much the same only when you switch off the art accelerator do you see a increase in current consumption so really you do not want to switch off the art accelerator and um, you leave that because it will provide you with the best output and you can see that we can average about 130 to 140 microamps per megahertz um, running at the 80 megahertz point of the device then same in run range number two always keep your art accelerator for the flash switch done helps with the current consumption and here your maximum speed is 26 megahertz and again all the free lines running from flash or running from SRAM are pretty close to each other and we can get down near enough to the 100 about 110 I think running from the flash um, was what we were saying uh, at that particular run range number two then down in the low power run you can see there's a bit more of a significant difference. So that, remember the technology is optimized for the uh, 26 megahertz area. So even at two megahertz, we're still doing very well. But as you slow the device down, then you will see an increase in current consumptions. So the best idea for running the device is run it in one of the optimal speeds, so two megahertz, 26 megahertz, or anywhere in the uh, run range number one, so any speed in run range number one, and process the information as fast as you can, put the device properly into sleep modes. So use the sleep modes that we have available on the device, rather than just running the device at really, really low frequencies. So the technology was never designed for that, so, to make sure that if you have a low power application, try and optimize the application to run at certain frequencies. So next I'll have a look at example number two, so low power run. This example is based around a data acquisition logger so so we're doing a sensor hub where we're just logging data uh, into the system so we will read the ADC every millisecond from the temperature sensor and then the data will be sent over a, a buffer and displayed on the LCD segment display 
So this one is example number two. So two underscore low power run from RAM. And we're now going to run the clock at the two megahertz and we will execute from SRAM one in this example. So to boot the device from SRAM, we will need to use the SD-Link utility uh, to configure the device. Um, so we will need to use our SD-Link utility tool and set the option bytes so that we are booting from SRAM and not from main flash. We will then need to use something to configure the boot zero pin. So we will need to put a jumper on the boot zero pin uh, to pull this pin high. So to enter boot from SRAM, then boot zero needs to be pulled high. And when we program the code in, we will need to change the start address to be the start of the SRAM. So that's 2 million hex that we need to uh, put into that part of the configuration tool. So when we load our example through ST-Link utility, we need to do that. So what we should see on the display is the current temperature. Uh, depending on how warm this room is, we'll see hopefully probably 20, it's fairly warm in here. Um, and if we used a current consumption profiling tool, you would see something, example that looks like that. But we would hopefully get an average current of about 410 microamps, we should hopefully see on the uh, ammeter.